movements and stuff. I know. And it's really interesting with the gender thing because I like how we are physically on screen. You're older, I'm younger, and then when when you dress me up and like it's just it's, I find that fascinating. The kind of like how the romance and the sexuality kind of changes and there's the question of it there like are they right. gonna have sex what's happening here and like yeah. I find that really interesting I haven't seen that before and it's, seeing it happen to yourself is like quite strange yeah <laughs> and also because I'm not like Alison was really clear she didn't want me to look like a like I was in drag like she wanted me to look just like you were wearing a dress like I was wearing a frumpy dress it worked it, it, it worked was, uh, no, but you also created this sort of cocoon of, of your world that wasn't the real world. And, yeah. very, and it's, it's, there's something about the way the film was made that made that possible, I think. I think Alison just has... There's a, an intimacy yeah. yeah. I think she has a very... As much as it was collaborative, she has a very strong point of view. And it's not a film I would have made with anyone else. It's really her... I think it's her... She sees things very specifically, which is, of course, sort of a prerequisite for being a filmmaker. But um, mm. I think we were always sort of striving for those moments of what is it that Allison sees in this that she wants? Mm. And are, we gi- are we giving it to her? Because it could be a small thing that we don't see yeah. uh, that she wanted. But she also sees things in you. So you were able to play music, and 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 you were able to do your little soft shoe, and, know. and you know there was yeah. stuff that she brought out of you that she saw in you. That's what I like about it. Yeah, it was nice. I feel like she. I mean, I, for me, I, it was nice because I, she had seen me. I think the first time she saw anything, I'd seen it, she saw anything I'd done was in Hannah takes the stairs and just that she saw that and then started working with me and then it's so incredibly wonderful that she saw something completely different in me because it it, it it makes you feel like you're not ever just one thing to have someone see that and make something for you. It's so flattering and incredibly generous. Well, I think she actually showed us more of what you can do um, and, and gave you that opportunity to show yourself as well. Um, because, uh, forgive me, but Arthur's going to take other <laughs> other skills. Arthur does take other skills. <laughs> and yes, I, it does. I, I'm actually, I was just saying I'm really, I feel like it's poetically appropriate that um, those two movies kind of are becoming nascent in the world at the same time like they're being born at the same time and they're so so different mm. what else have you got coming up um i have a i have i did a film with Whit stillman um after i did arthur so uh I, that should be done at some point soon it should be out in the next year what's and the title damsels and the Damsels in Distress. In distress. Yeah. Okay. And um, that was really wonderful and a completely different experience, too. So do you plan to keep the studio indie thing on parallel tracks? Um, I haven't had a lot of agency in that. Like, I, I, it's happened that way, but it, it hasn't been by design. Um, I, I, hope, I hope so. I hope to do both. I feel incredibly lucky that I've gotten to do both. Um, and that people have accepted me kind of in both realms. I, I love both kinds of movies. So. Well, let me ask you both. I mean, do you think that there is a certain demand on the part of audiences for a kind of deeper authenticity than, than you get most of the time? If, if I feel like there, there's some movement in that direction, like, like audiences really crave something that they're not getting, and that this movie is that kind of movie. I I hope so. I think I think it takes. I, you need to provide provide a material that people find interesting, and then you need the audience to find it interesting. It's like a two way thing. So I would hope that that's the case. That that people are yeah. more getting more interested in those kind of movies. But interestingly, Ollie in the in in, in the sort of intermediary what am, what am I trying to say in the time in between we made this movie and the kids came out so we shot it like a year and three months ago oh yeah he was in a play in London 
by this playwright Annie Baker, who's one of my. F she's an amazing playwright. She's she's great. She's, uh, uh, she's had you know, plays up in New York that have just been incredible and they're directed by this guy Sam Gold and there's an, a really beautiful, soft authenticity and gentleness and she really loves language but she loves people and it, it's sort of like the theater equivalent of, I think, what I respond to in film and um, I thought it, I, again, like poetically appropriate that you would be, he was in an Annie Baker play in London and she came and worked with him and I feel, I feel, I feel like that's what I respond to, and I, you respond to, and I feel like, mm. luckily, I think like attracts like. Yeah, well, exactly. Like you saying that you haven't consciously done it by design, this kind of. Right. But I guess who you are as a person and the talents that you have and can give, like, you attract that, and then, you know, it goes out into the world in whatever way it does. Luckily, you never get hired for jobs that, <laughs> like, the, you. If they don't want you, they won't hire you. Yeah. So, <laughs> you, well, I mean, it's a tough, for the most part. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you know how hard it can be. Wait, I know how hard it can be to get a. Yeah, that's true. I know how hard it can. It's. Mm. I don't know. Um, it feels fortuitous how everything's fallen into place, but not. Um, I don't know. I feel lucky. I think there is, but I do think there is. I think people want. Um, something new. Um, That's I think, true. I think they look, I think they look for something, um, I mean, there are, I mean, I think it's sort of a cliche, but there really are only so many kinds of stories, you know, there are archetypes of stories, but, um, mm. but when people feel that it's being told in a slightly new, new way, or s more specific, or more um, truthful, I think it's their, like, heart leaps out of their chest, I think, they go, oh my god. Yeah. But this thing that, that you guys did in this case had, had, had some real um, deep feelings in it, but also hilarious humor, <laughs> which, oh. which, which really comes from being sort of fearless, I think. You have to just let it sh all hang out, and, and we're, we're like recognizing it and laughing. Yeah. <laughs> but we feel for you at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about the, the long take thing last night. Um, we were saying last night because we, it was the first time we'd seen it with an audience that because there's so many long takes in it <laughs> that we'd often start off a take and we could see ourselves like actively struggling <laughs> and then that we'd, we'd push through it. We had no... For some reason, the, the, la the, the po potential for embarrassment and then the lack of embarrassment because of how it was made hmm. allowed there to be really interesting, strange stuff that I don't think we ever would have done yeah. under any other circumstances. Well, yeah. the, scene, the scene where you're in the car driving at the very beginning, yeah. which sets the tone, actually, because yeah. you're just careening. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to be in control of the car. <laughs> you're throwing the cell phone out the window, <laughs> and you're careening. I mean, yeah. what's the word I'm looking for? It's, wailing. A, it's, a, it's a whale. I'm reeling. I'm, like a beast. I'm falling off the cliff. We had to do that a few times. Um, so, and it was this tunnel by Baltimore, and I kept going around back and doing the tunnel again. And every time, I mean, my vocal cords were just shredded because I was, you know, this variety of screaming that was going on. But, um, yeah, it was, if Allison, Allison in her way would say, <laughs> she'd go <laughs> I'd, I would just be you know so angry and crying and I'd just done it and she'd go I'd say are we done and she'd go oh um okay and I was like oh oh fine okay we're doing it again and then we'd go back around and do it again but she had such a gentle way and yeah. um yeah <laughs> so Ollie what are you doing, gonna be doing next um I um I there's a movie I did just before Christmas that'll probably come out Christmas called Cheerful Weather for the Wedding. It's a <laughs> very British um, movie. And um, so that's happening. And then I don't really know. I think ways. the truth is we're both unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Not for long. Not for long. <laughs> it's always that question, what do you do next? Oh, you know, a couple, know, a couple always, of things. I always, feel, I, I always feel like this pressure to say something that I'm doing something. Yeah. It's like when you go home at Christmas and your parents' friends are like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? And you're like, <laughs> Nothing. <laughs>
something. <laughs> <laughs> like, I felt like, the, you know, after college, I'd always go home, and they're like, how are those grad school applications going? Not so good. You went to Barnard. I did. I did. I happened to be at the Athena Film Festival, and you were there. I know. I love Barnard. I have a, a very um, strong, it, like, Barnard did everything for me as a person, so I have, um, if I ever have, like, a pile of money, I'll hand it over. Or I'd love to be a professor. <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be That's so cool. That's my secret dream. Yeah. Um, what would you teach? I don't know. I was thinking I could be one of those professors who has like a, a class that's just vaguely inappropriate. <laughs> like, yeah. like, the, well, like it's sort of like it's sort of like like theater I, arts. Yeah. Or no, it, learning how to move. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like it would be like um like solo performance where you what write and direct your own like one woman show but then it would always just verge into like me telling kids inappropriate <laughs> stories about my life my I think they, like, the, like the waiting list would be very long and they'd be like she's a nut you have to talk to her about it and then they'll be like when I was in Hollywood 